you know what? I'm starting to feel like this is going to be a consistent thing every week where we just think to ourselves, hmm, is it two a time? Also, shout out to DolphinsTalk.com where you can find my videos along with other Miami Dolphins content. You know, after, you know, we got, we, we, after the game yesterday, obviously a lot of us were upset. A lot of us were disappointed. I, it's a brand new day. We got a chance to gather our thoughts and, you know, we just can't be just saying things all recklessly after a loss and we're upset. So at this point where I'm, I'm just sitting here and I was just thinking, is it to a time yet? And, you know, I'm starting to get to that point. And I say that because I didn't get a chance to cover those leaked videos of Tua during the course of training camp. They were leaked by Chester Rogers. Um, I'm not going to lie. Tua did look fairly decent. But with that being said, again, Brian Flores had his press conference today. He didn't exactly give a an actual an actual answer if Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be the starter for week five against the 49ers. So I'm I'm open, I'm optimistic and open about that particular situation. Now, going off of how Ryan Fitzpatrick ended up playing against the Seattle Seahawks, I like again, I said this yesterday. I feel like there were some opportunities that we missed upon. Like there should be no reason at all where we ended up having five drives where we ended up kicking field goals in all five of those drives. I feel like we should have punched in at least three of the five drives that we had for touchdowns. And I can guarantee you that we would have won this game. Now, obviously there were some bad throws by Ryan Fitzpatrick where he ended up trying to thread the needle in, in particular areas and nearly almost got the ball picked off. Again, he ended up having two interceptions. To be honest with you, the way he was threading the needle on some of those passes, it should have been at least three. Now, I get the fact that we have big, tall, big, tall receiver guys that can go up and get those 50-50 balls. But again, we're going to have to take care of the football. The last interception in the fourth quarter was at a crucial point where we had the opportunity to tie the football game and we end up having the turnover and we end up being down by two possessions. So the argument that folks are trying to put out there, okay, it's two a time. Because they're so, so confident that Tua could go in and play even better. If we're just looking at the Miami Dolphins record right now, we're sitting at one and three. The Houston Texans right now are sitting at 0 and four because I feel like that Houston Texans pick is going to play a big, huge factor moving forward, whether we like it or not. Because if the Houston Texans are in, in position to get in that number one overall pick, we may be in the sweepstakes to get into Trevor Lawrence. And it, it goes back to what we was discussing last year when it would come down to Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen needed to play last year because we didn't know what we was getting in Josh Rosen. I felt like we needed to see as much as we possibly can out of Josh Rosen before we ended up setting it, setting it in stone, plant the flag on, all right, we're going to go ahead and go out and get to it. And I feel like this, this goes into this, it's the same situation. Now, again, we've four games into the season. A quarter of the season is already finished. The next three games are going to be pretty tough. San Fran, Car uh, excuse me, Arizona, and Denver. It's not as tough as I was expecting it to be. I feel like right now, yes, San Fran is going to be pretty tough, but they are pretty decimated at this particular point. Looking at the Miami Dolphins offensive line right now, they're, they're playing fairly decent. Like, I feel like they're not a, they're not an embarrassment. They're not they're not an embarrassment. I see some good things from the offensive line where I feel like it's safe to put a quarterback back here to be able to do his thing. When I look at Ryan Fitzpatrick, the hits that he takes, the chances that he makes, those kind of things they're starting to add up. Like. Just this past game, he threw for over, he threw over 40 times. I don't think that Ryan Fitzpatrick can hold up throwing the football 40 times a game. That's not happening. Like, 
last year there was a time a point where i was like yo like is his arm good like did he throw his arm out because he's just not putting that much velocity on the ball at his current age it's going it's going to go and him putting up throwing the ball 40 times a game that lifespan is not going to bowl too well but back to Tua though when we sit here and ask the question is it Tua time you know what I'm going to go ahead and concede. I feel like it's that time. We've got San Fran this this coming upcoming week. Arizona next. We got Denver. Let's put him in there. Let's see what he could possibly, what he can do in this offense. Because for one, the two of supporters out there that think that he's going to be our future and save us and he can, they feel like he could do a hell of a lot better behind center than Ryan Fitzpatrick, they can shut up. And then the other ones that feel like we need to get everything else together before we end up starting to it, they can shut up too. (laughs) Me included, me included. But yeah, it's going to be interesting, especially the fact that Brian Flores came out and said today, wasn't exactly set in stone that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be the starter. So nine times out of ten, I'm thinking they they about to go sway that way. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know what it is. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is a great one, Devore. I'm up out of here.